<laughs> I'm, not, I'm not kidding. You guys, my brother's gonna be laughing for days. Hell yeah. Days? Yeah. <laughs> I got a lot more of those. I'll just keep sending them to okay. you. <laughs> not mom's puking, but like yeah. of the same humor level. I figured. I feel like figured. talking low tonight. Figured you didn't have a storage of mom's puking. <laughs> you never know with Justin, though. <laughs> it's not true. Not that unpredictable. Uh, kind of. Okay, I like that. I like to be unpredictable, actually. Kind it's of. boring to be with someone who isn't. I can't get that video out of my fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that are like, what are they talking right. about? Justin decided to share a video of people throwing up. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> it's much, much more than that. Explain the I video. I would not watch a video that's just people puking. That's weird. <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> Wasn't there a movie scene though where everyone starts puking together? Bridesmaids? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I saw a weird scene on TikTok where it's in a some movie from a different country and he walks up and he's like, what'd you say? And he just keeps slapping the shit out of everyone at this family gathering, even the kid, everybody. What movie was he walks this? Up to, I don't even know. It's the most disturbing clip I've ever seen. Damn. Wow. Where, I'll, wait, I'll share this, this one from? after our recording. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't know. It came across on TikTok. Wait, I don't know how to make this microphone. I feel super far away from you guys, but am I like we're on the screen and everything? Yeah, we're equally spiced. Okay. Oh, uh, did you explain the puke video to people so they're not confused? Uh, well, I'm sure a lot of people have seen it. It was pretty viral, but but what if they haven't? It was a basically the scenario would be your mom visiting you at college. It'd be like parents week, and your mom has a little too much elky and. Starts doing the thing. Oh, God. And then, like, it happens. And then as she's running to the bathroom, slips and falls on her back. And- <laughs> it's so bad. She, like, is projectile vomiting, trying to hold it in. And it's coming out in front of her as she's running into it and then slips on it. It's just... Sorry, I was just saying, there's just something about, like, slipping on one's own puke that is just, like, the <laughs> ultimate, like, L. <laughs> and if you're eating, we are sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> it's an epic video because it all happens within like five seconds. I like so it. much happened in five seconds. It definitely mm-hmm. gives Vine energy. <laughs> yes. It's some Vine energy. Um, these stories don't have a lot of Vine energy today. They're very happy and wholesome. That's why I'm here. Yeah. That's this, what I need. Yeah. You you definitely take the Reddit stories we read probably the hardest. I feel for people and animals. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Mostly animals, but people too. <laughs> So, yeah, it'll be a really good episode. It's the last one of 2022. Which That's why is we're getting drunk. Crazy. Woo! Absolutely crazy Are we to think about. to the year? Yeah, yeah. let's cheer. Two hot takes? We had Cheers. so much fun this year with all of you, and it's just been a wild ride. And our second, an- our second anniversary slash like two hot takes is birthday will be February 10th. Yeah. Like it's just Is been- that from the first episode? I believe so. Yeah. I wonder like when the first logo was made. Like when the first asset or ha- was created. How about the text when Morgan goes, I'm thinking about calling it two hot takes. Yeah. I don't know. I have texts from when I was like, I want to start a podcast. And it was like April of 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Took a f- almost a full year to come out with this thing. True. But. I mean, that's the story. You didn't have the equipment. and You can twist it. I, if you're worried about things haunting you, I wouldn't have that bear in here. Look at the thing's eyes. <laughs> it seems nice. Yeah. Oh. Lauren, do you want to take him home with you? No. Mm. I can't. Why? Because I, I'm working on decluttering and this would just add to... No, 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 no. That's not clutter. That's friend. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Well, welcome to the last Two Hot Takes episode of 2022, you guys. I'm your host, Morgan. I'm Lauren. I'm Justin. And let's dive in. Let's do it. Look at us introducing at the beginning. I know. I was like, uh, what? I don't know how I remember that. I really don't. I'm not used to that. Skips my brain every time. Well, Alejandra was saying that you guys always do it. She must be good at... Re- she reminds at the end. Mm. She's oh. She reminds me at the okay. end. Just have so many. I just want to make sure I got the best of the best. We'll start with the first one that probably has gone the most viral, I think, out of anything I've come across on Reddit. Um, and once I tell the story, you'll probably be like, okay, I remember seeing that. Mm. 
So this was originally posted in r slash Boston by yours true Lee. And it is coming from the best of Redditor updates with permission from OP. The original post was titled Seeking Random Internet Strangers to Help Fill a Small Theater, where I will surprise propose to my girlfriend. December 6, 2019. Backstory. My girlfriend and I were high school sweethearts. We split up when we moved away for college, but through freak happenstance, reconnected 10 years later and got back together. On 12-30, I planned to propose to her during a screening of her favorite movie. Sprinkled into the audience, hidden will be our family and friends to surprise her and celebrate afterwards. In an effort to prevent her from noticing these familiar faces, I've reserved 20 seats surrounding hers as a buffer. If you are interested in filling one of the seats, please DM me. In return, you will get a free screening of most of Sleeping Beauty, pizza and or beer afterwards, a whole, a wholesome and memorable Monday night, a successful entry into the annals of, quote, we did it, read it, my eternal gratitude. Thank you. Edit. Damn, I love you guys. That was way more interest in this than I was expecting. Thank you, everyone who has reached out. Right now, it's skewing mostly 20-somethings, go figure. So to even it out, please let me know if you're a parent and have a Disney-age son or daughter that would like to attend. You will have first priority. Update. I proposed to my girlfriend with the help of some random internet strangers. We did it, Reddit. Aww. And there's a video of the proposal that OP shared. And I saw it on TikTok, I think. I bet you did. Yeah, I remember this one. Clever. Have you seen this one? No. Oh, that's amazing. It's so that cute. That was so cool how he threw it out of the screen. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That custom custom animation to fit them. And that's so cool. Really cute. So their wedding happened recently. Oh. And I went on their Instagram and creeped on them. And it was absolutely beautiful. I mean, they're just a gorgeous couple and Oh, it just was so magical. If it wasn't going to be a wholesome episode, That's I was going to be like, oh, no. And they broke up. No, yeah. <laughs> I thought there was going to be some drama. Like, I'm writing in again. I'm the guy who proposed at the movie. Mm. And I need your guys' help. That would be I have these not questions. so and, good. But he this spent, is wholesome. He spent six months That's on that animation. That's incredible. He did it? He did it, apparently, yeah. For the past six months, I've been animating my girlfriend and myself. Wow, oh. that's fucking phenomenal. Mm-hmm. So, so cool. I just like, I think that's just like the power of the internet and Reddit. It's mm -hmm. just like how you can bring so many people together. I saw another one too. where another someone proposal did, like that? Yeah, where someone did it as like, um, it was a trailer before the movie. I'll find it, I'll find it. And you can, you can maybe post it. But yeah. it was something similar to where the trailer all of a sudden came on and it was, a video of him doing X, Y, Z. And then like it all led up to the theater again. And it was really cool. I'll find it. Oh, I like that too. Okay. Moving along. Got to get clever these days. I saw, I saw Lauren with some tears already. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. I got chills right when he, when the cartoons threw it up and then he grabbed it. That was just so cool. It was really <laughs> cute. Okay. So this next one is from r slash dad it. So it's like a subreddit for dads. Oh. And it's titled, Advice on Having a Difficult Conversation. My daughter is now six years old. I've been in her life since before she was a year, but I am not the biological father. February 2019, the adoption was finalized. Every year we have our special anniversary where we get dressed up, she gets a corsage, and we go out to a fancy restaurant and do whatever she wants for the whole day. We discussed what to do for this year, and I could see she had something troubling on her mind. I'm nervous she's going to ask why we have a special anniversary. Any advice on how to address it if she asks? A bit of information. Her biological father never had any kind of relationship with her. She looks like me, acts like me, and has no memory of before the adoption. And Best of Reddit Updates kind of put some, like, of the best comments together. Okay. Hey, so lurking mom here, forgive the intrusion. I was in a similar situation to your daughter, except it was never celebrated. 
My parents started dating when I was a few months old. I always knew my dad wasn't my bio dad, but it was never talked about. She doesn't really understand what biological means at this point. What she does know is that you're the dad she's always ever known. Here's the story I would have loved. I wasn't around when you were born. I met you and your mom when you were X years, months old. I love you and your mom so much. I wanted to be a part of your family. So today we celebrate the date that you became my daughter and I became your daddy. It's kind of like a second special birthday that just you and I get to have. It's awesome that you celebrate this day. Love and positivity around the adopting of a child is amazing. And OP responds, Thank you. I've been overthinking what to say, so this is very helpful. We were blessed to have a great support group. It took 18 months of court battles, and when I finally went before the judge to make it official, he asked me one question. What do you call her? I smiled and said, Nugget. He told me the sign of a loving dad is that he gives her a special name. The next Sunday, we were thrown a surprise party at church and everyone pitched in to cover the legal expenses we occurred over the last year and a half. The update was posted 31 days later. Update on telling my daughter I adopted her. Her mother told her about it last week without consulting me. At first, I was upset, but opted to just wait and see how things played out. Fast forward to yesterday. I was sitting on the couch and my daughter came up to me and asked if she could talk to me. The conversation goes as following. Daddy, mommy told me you adopted me. Yes, what did she say? She said, a man didn't want me and you loved me so much you adopted me. That's right, baby. I loved you from the minute I saw you and love you more every day. I love you too. I'm happy God made you my daddy. Me too. Do you have any questions about anything? Do we have to tell people I'm adopted? Do you want to? No, you're my daddy. It can be our secret. Can we still have our special anniversary? Of course. What color corsage do you want this year? Purple. Now I'm sleepy. After she went to bed, I was bawling like a baby. So many nights thinking about having that conversation and it couldn't have gone any better. She's an amazing, beautiful little girl and I'm so beyond lucky to have her. Thank you to everyone in the sub for all the encouraging advice regarding the prequel post to this one. You're an amazing group of dads and lurking moms. <laughs> so this episode is just going to be me fighting yeah. back tears the entire time. <laughs> Same. Ugh. So uh, she didn't know, right? No, the little girl. Yeah. No. So the mom then ended up bringing it up. She must have or just like told her last week. Yeah. I don't like that she didn't consult her, but like it turned out fine. And or I don't like that he she didn't consult him yeah. but I mean it turned out fine in the end but yeah. still like mm. yeah I almost lost it at nugget what do you call her nugget. I know because that's what you I say all the you time I'm like oh fuck you say that I know it's just it is there's something I think for like any parent it takes such a strong amazing kind person to be a parent yeah like there's a difference between a someone who can have kids but then someone who is a parent yep. i like that judge yeah really mm. cool and so i just think it's amazing and to take on a kid that's not yours to to come into a kid's life and adopt them i mean jerry did the same thing for me and you know my siblings and it's it's one thing to be a parent of a kid of your own but to be a parent and love a child that is not yours and to love them just wholeheartedly no strings attached yeah it's amazing. Well, I know it's really different. Cool. I know it's different from like, you know, Jerry and you have been together for a very, very long time. Yeah. But no matter who it is, I feel like with Jerry, everyone almost has that feeling. Because I've only known him for what, four years? And he practically calls me his kid. You mm -hmm. know, you just feel so welcomed by people like him. Yeah, he's uh, he's pretty amazing. Well, and something that I've mentioned before, but... What I thought was so cool is that we have a mutual friend who um, has two children and she was telling me recently that, you know, she wanted to donate her eggs and that she doesn't, you know, mind the idea of thinking that like some of her DNA is out there um, and that she wouldn't know them. And she was saying that if she goes, I honestly think that being a parent is all about raising them. She's like, if you were to tell me right now that my children were somehow not biologically mine, it wouldn't make me, it wouldn't make me feel any different, not even slightly. Yeah. And I just thought that was so beautiful. You know, it's, mm -hmm. 
It really is. It's it's raising children. It is. It's all about the effort it takes to make them into nice, functional, kind humans. <laughs> okay, on to the next one. This is going to be kind of a rapid fire episode too, because there's not there's not much to say about these ones. It's yeah. just well, and maybe you can keep the people listening if you just put one slice of drama right at the end. I definitely have. Um, I can ha- I can handle it. I do have some like quirky wholesome ones that are more so like malicious compliance petty revenge mm. that I find wholesome so <laughs> we uh, we will have those sprinkled throughout okay I was actually thinking about this it's recently it's kind of shocking to me because I do feel very deeply like if I'm talking to a friend who's confiding in me in some issue that they're going through mm-hmm. it's like I, I'll take on some of that pain and I don't know that I do that with the podcast like talk, like you guys talking about how it's really hard on Justin. I never leave and I'm just like, wow, that was really hard on me. And I don't know what it is, but I don't know if I get softer stories or if it's just because when we talk through it, it feels in a way resolved a lot of times. Mm-hmm. I'm not really sure what it is, but it doesn't like I don't go home and feel, feel drained. drained. Yeah. yeah. I know it is interesting. Justin, uh, Justin kind of does. Oh, I yeah. mean, it's fair. To, it's fair to feel that way. That's that's why I'm like I'm shocked that I, I'm realizing that I don't think that I do. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is interesting. If anything, I feel energized because I'm like me and Morgan just had so much fun together. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there is the thought like, well, everything that I was really stressed about, at least it's not as bad as these stories. Like, I mean, not in this episode, but in those other ones. I don't know. There's there's some heavies. There's some heavy hitters that turn around right now. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm a little confident then. Got a little cocky down there. <laughs> okay. So this is originally from r slash found paper coming from best of Redditor updates now. And it's titled, I found this on my husband's desk. He's either so romantic or having an affair. And it's a note, handwritten note. Mm-hmm. And it says, being with you and around you is a gift. You light up my life and others. You make life so much easier. You inspire. You conquer and master. Highlighted comments that people pulled from Best of Redditor Updates. Plot twist. He wrote that about himself as a positive affirmation to lift his own (laughs) spirits. (laughs) Next person. Who's going to tell her? Between the pen at the very top, indicating the testing of the pen, the hole-punched, spiral-bound, not letter paper, and the bullet point format, this really looks like a rough draft of some kind. Whether it's for a card, him writing stuff down so he can better formulate strongly worded compliments for you, or even self-affirmation. I think there's almost no way this could be anything other than very sweet and wholesome. Update, I found a love note on my husband's desk, and it was either romantic or bad news bears. Okay, first of all, this got way more attention than I expected. It made my day so much fun, so thanks for all your comments. Lots of people wanted update, so I thought I would share. This afternoon, the note was in the trash. I asked my husband why there was a love letter in the trash, and he was so confused. So I really love St. Patrick's Day, and I was really depressed around that time this year. He wanted to do something special for me, so he bought me six gifts to make me feel better, like a ball of yarn, a pepperoni stick, slippers, craft supplies, and I forgot the rest. I think Brie. But each gift came with a mini card that had one thing he loves about me. That note was his brainstorm of things he loves about me. Oh. <laughs> I love that. I thought this was going to be the one that like flips around since she was tempted, like, you know, dang- dangling that in front of you. That was great. He said he wrote a totally different list for his mistress. What? <laughs> oh, you're fucking with me. I love no, it. No, that's down here. What? They're fu- you're fucking with me. No, it's a joke. Oh, okay. OP goes... He said he wrote a totally different list for his mistress. So there's that. Yeah. Like okay. he must have been kidding. Yeah. So you need dude, to be able to have that. Dude. No, but if Lauren so, straight panics. <laughs> well, I was in the that. zone. <laughs> I know, yeah. but you need to be able to have that kind of response in a relationship. I mean, that's just perfect. No, yeah. if I, you have that sense of humor, I mean cheeky. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I love sarcasm. I just did not pick up on that one. I mean <laughs> Morgan has a good poker face. Yeah. <laughs> I think not really, actually. Eh. Yeah, but if you saw a note like that, I 
The last thing my mind would go to is it's for someone else. I don't know. I had a nightmare last night that you were cheating and having other people in your bed. Oh, let's get into that. I just, you know, those nightmares that you have about your partner and you're just like, you wake up just mad and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Having other people. Oh yeah. In my, in my bed that we were sleeping in. Yeah. I was like, it was a dream where you literally had like another girl in your bed. I was like, what the fuck? And you just like happened to pop by. I don't even know. I was just so, I was raging. I have. Uh, Did you hit me? Dude, I will have a dream like that. Um, I've had that before where the person that I'm with, they're with somebody else. And I and I see that. I catch them and I'm like, what are you doing? And they look at oh me with God. like a stone cold face and they're like, what? What? And like not being able to get through to them, like how painful it is, is so hard. And I'll like, I'll like hit them and I they're like <laughs> a brick wall. I'm like, why don't you understand? Why don't you get it? Like, and it's just is oh, like that's crazy. Yeah, it's happened a couple of times and it's oh just the God. worst thing because they're just like, What are you talking about? And I'm like, What do you mean? <laughs> I had a crazy I had crazy dreams all night last night too. I don't know what it was. Why? What Most was of it? mine, I swear, the majority of mine. Or either I'm like getting run, shot at, killed, something, the world's ending. Or, yeah, very apocalyptic. I have those. I mean, same. Or, and those always happen when I'm in the middle of a triathlon, like on the run portion. Interesting. And it's like I thought you start, do those. I used to. That's very cool. But most of mine deal with school. Yeah. And I'm in class so and school. I don't have an assignment completed. I feel, mm -hmm. like, I feel like we've had this conversation yeah. on here. Probably. Or I'm showing up to school and it's like one of the first days and I can't find the classroom. Yep. Or the locker. Yes. Or my bus. Or my bus. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm <laughs> in class and I just literally don't know what's happening and I have no ability and I'm getting called on. And I don't know how to answer. And it's like, mm -hmm. that is so many of my dreams. I'm like, what the hell, dude? I've been out of school forever. Do you know what the worst ones are? What? Server nightmares. If you've ever been a server really? and you literally, I still have them to this day. And in my dreams, I'll like have a busy packed restaurant. Mm -hmm. It's usually Perkins from yeah. where I worked in high school. I worked out at Perkins, which is basically a Denny's for those that don't know. And I would like go from table to table and each table asked me for something I forgot. Do you have my waters? Oh no, I forgot your waters. Let me go right. I'll go get them That's right now. That's kind of like the school one. Go to the next yeah. one. Hey, where's my bacon? Oh, I'll go get it right now. And I keep going table to table, like forgetting, messing up orders, like. Do you guys ever have the um, the dreams where the all the bathrooms are completely flooded or have like shit all over them so you can't get to them? No. I have ones where I cannot <laughs> What's find. What's that about? It's a stress dream. I looked it up. They're, yeah. they're, they're all stress dreams. I have one where I cannot find a bathroom in a particular place. Oh my God. And I have to go. Fortunately, usually it's just the number one. But yeah, you had to clarify. The thing is, sometimes I will find the bathroom and in my dream, I will go. Oh, that's interesting. I'm surprised you haven't wet the bed. Yeah. And seriously. I wake up and I'm like, wait. And I wet the bed. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, wait. And it, no, it hasn't no, happened. It didn't. It hasn't happened you know? Oh, God. I just pull that's out my I eyelashes a lot. Like, that is really, the, that's the dream I have the most out of any I remember. And this weird one with Justin Bieber where we're riding a ski lift <laughs> and then it starts collapsing because it's like the War of the World robots are coming down. One less lonely girl action. Yeah. What? <laughs> but Justin's the most so common one is me. I like pull out, I touch my eyelashes and then they start falling out in wow. my hands. I haven't had that one, which is, and I've probably, I probably have had like almost a every dream that you could think of because I remember my dreams almost every night. Like last night, I had a dream that my one of my exes was stuck underneath the clubhouse that my grandpa built for me as a kid in Whoa. my backyard. I haven't That's thought crazy. about. I know I haven't thought about that clubhouse in forever. Why was he under there? Why it's was so crazy? So I wish weird. we knew more about that stuff. It's so weird. That's I can keep talking one. about this for a long time. I know. I, I want to go to a dream analysis. I would love that. How do you know it's real? It's still fun. Yeah. <laughs> Just like anything. Yeah, yeah. Including my Reddit recap. That personality thing. Have you done your Reddit recap yet? No. I um. It's like you get your own little personality test, like player card. Mm -hmm. And mine was provocative insight. Which like, how crazy is that? It's, it's like, it was honestly one of the most fitting things. I haven't gone on Reddit <clears throat> at all anymore because... I never want to spoil anything. spoil it oh. and come across stories that you're telling me. That's you should funny. go look and see what it gave you. Okay. okay, so this next one's a little a little quirky, a little funny. All right, maybe maybe to me it was. Ooh. So it's from Am I the Asshole, and it's titled "Am I the Asshole for Taking Family Photos to Send Out Without My Actual Mom and Stepdad, and with Friends in Costumes as Them." 
after they took their family photos without me. I was born to a teen mom. My mom had me at 17. She later married my stepdad and they had my step-siblings, who are 9 and 12, respectively. I'm 18 and in college now. Before Easter, I was at college and I found out that my mom and stepdad took family photos without me for the cards. My mom said it was just because she needed them printed in time and I was at college, dot, 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 dot. But college is only 25 minutes away and I feel like my stepdad is resentful that their family includes some other guy's kid. He also described the photo as of, quote, close family, but then backpedaled and said, I just wasn't as close physically because I'm at college. Mm. So I decided to play a little joke. I took my younger siblings and two of my best friends to the Walmart Photoshop, and we took deliberately (laughs) cheesy family photos, all wearing blue jeans and jean jackets. My friends dressed as my mom and stepdad. My female friend wore a bald cap to be my stepdad, and my male friend wore a wig and a denim dress to be my mom. My friend is really talented with makeup and honestly did a great job making them look like them. That's dope. We took a bunch of pictures with props and picked a favorite of all of us standing in silly action poses wearing raccoon skin hats. Between the makeup, hair, and big hats, we all agreed my friends looked like my parents when the picture was postcard-sized. It was honestly a really funny photo, really different than the serious ones my family's, my family always takes. I had it printed on cards and signed them with, quote, love the blank family. I swapped the cards in the envelopes <laughs> no! my mom had prepared and resealed them with the sort of stickers she uses. <laughs> Apparently, a couple of my extended family members didn't look hard enough at the picture to notice something was off and just displayed them. (laughs) Yes. But a few people mentioned to my mom that the picture was funny, which pissed her off because she thought they were talking about her very boring photo of them all sitting on a picnic blanket with a giant Easter basket. Then my aunt sent a photo of the card to the family group chat and said, quote, this isn't you, is it? Oh. And the gig was up. Nice. My mom was furious at me for sending out the joke cards and embarrassing the family. <laughs> and also for not sending the cards she had made and wrote in. That's hilarious. I told That's her. so good. I told her that I didn't get why she was upset about being left out of the family photo. <laughs> Apparently, it isn't a big deal to be treated like you're not part of the family. She said that I was making a mockery of her and my stepdad by having quote cross dressers be in the photo i said okay mom i said that i just wanted a photo with my close family just like my stepdad did and i consider those friends of mine my closest family because i guess that's just something we can choose now my mom got so mad at me sassing her and she told me to leave and i went back to college Am I the asshole for pulling that stunt with Easter photos? That's no. kind of asshole. No. <laughs> Justified asshole. I, I think parents can't so handle funny. when kids outplay them. Oh my God. No. Like when they get outplayed, oh, but, but, oh, and they like, they know exactly, mm-hmm. they can see the wrong yeah. doing. Oh, it's just beautiful. They, ca- they can't, like, she can't actually say anything. So it's, she's. It's beautifully done. Shut a loss for words. But like, why is it such a big deal? Some people are too serious about the Christmas card thing. I think it's awkward when people's cards are so like, like proper. And they almost remind me of like the paintings that they used to have in, in old mansions. I mean, it's not Bridgerton where it's like, you sent out what photo? Our family image is ruined forever. And you're just like, everything's a big deal. And like every little tiny mistake makes your family like, like shameful it's just i don't know get out of the past people there's this series that i i was i know i think it's funny too like i I i've talked about this before too when your family is so worried about impressing like your external family extended family that they're going to like ruin relationships with like the people right in front of them like i'm like what are you doing why do you care more about what great aunt bernice thinks than what yeah little Susie thinks. I I think it kind of comes out of family comp, familial competition though a yeah. little bit. Yeah, where it's like we're great, we're doing awesome. Like, because you know you have a family, and in larger families you have smaller divisions, which is like 
you know, a partner, a couple, and then kids, right? Or some sort of smaller family unit. And then like this family unit is doing better than this one. Mm. Ooh, we have to show everyone. Let's take a picture in front of the house we got this year. And let's put that little Johnny got on the honor roll and blah, blah, blah. And it's like this show offy thing, which I think if I ever do little holiday cards or anything like this, Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do something weird and just funny. I think the JCPenney type photo shoots like this are are so cool. It's so amazing. (laughs) I think we need to do two hot takes one now. But We did the other day. Basically, (laughs) our Christmas photos or uh, holiday (laughs) photos are pretty wild. But I don't mind that so much. Like the little updates with like family, especially people you don't like interact with that much where they're like, Timmy is in seventh grade and he had an A in science with this astronomy poster or like whatever like i like when people can yeah i like, agree i agree share Absolutely. themselves i, I was more that. talking about the 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 weird competition that yeah. comes up in between i didn't mean yeah. to drag it into the the cards i just mean there's always this competitive nature between different smaller family groups yeah I and it's funny that. that you say that too because i've i've thought this before where it's like siblings when they're growing up together, a lot of times they're very competitive with each other. But then once they move out of the house, they become best friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then once they have kids and their own family units, then they become competitive again. <laughs> <laughs> My kids are better in sports than yours. Like, it's I don't so know. Interesting. It's, yeah, it is. I know. It's wild. People were like, how did you get your siblings to keep quiet? So and uh, OP responded back, they are obsessed with playing spies. So all I had to do was put it in terms of us doing a top secret mission. Oh, oh nice. So good. Uh, yeah. So much respect to OP. I know. <laughs> and um, someone was like, this keeps getting better and better. And OP responds and goes, it's so funny because they weren't very good spies. They kept whispering and giggling about the secret mission. <laughs> but my mom and stepdad literally just thought they were playing and never asked yeah. what the secret mission yeah. was. Oh, that's so well so played. Good. I think this is absolutely justified, especially yeah. like you look at the first story we had about the dad that adopted this little girl and then the stepdad who still kind of came in at a younger point yeah. and like is threatened by an 18 year old child that his wife had before he existed. Like people like that. Why are you with them? If you are dating someone that has a problem with your child, why are you with them? Yeah. That's your child. And also to be far away too. So speaking, all of my entire family is in Minnesota and I'm in Los Angeles, obviously. And normally it's my choice. Like I, I know that I'm the one who decided to move away from everybody. And Mm -hmm. so when I get left out, that's totally fine. But (laughs) you guys, I lost my shit one time because I found out that they had been doing, I I never go back for Thanksgiving because I always come back for Christmas. And it's like the the tickets are expensive. They're so close together. I just, I just don't. And, um, I found out that they do like this like Thanksgiving tradition every single year <laughs> and I was I lost my shit. I was so heartbroken. What was it? They all like write into a piece of a paper of what they're thankful for every single year and they put it into like a they put it into a container. So they keep it every single year and then they like read it off every year. They keep all of them? They keep them from every year. And it, oh, they wow. started it literally when I moved away. So there's, I've never been a part of this tradition. I never even heard about it until like six years later, whatever it was. And I was, did you go back for Thanksgiving this year? No. <laughs> Hell no. Oh my God. They should give you a mail-in ballot at least. <laughs> That's what I said. I was like, you could FaceTime me and write it down for me. Yeah. It's got to be in your handwriting. So you got to mail it. Uh, no, because th- this is how I found out is that we were doing a FaceTime and my brother also wasn't there that year and we were doing like a family FaceTime and, and they, they were him. They were like, Michael, we need to know like your <gasps> thingy. Yeah. And that's oh. when I was like, wait, what thingy? Yeah, that's well, <laughs> that's see, betrayal. That's justified. I was crushed, you guys. That's betrayal. So I'm, that's I'm weird. I mean, it was one of those. Well, it was also it wasn't. I didn't do it on purpose. Like it was uh, a young one who said it to my brother and it was just because all the names are right there. So it was like, we need yours. Uh, And so, and it was one of those things that they just started casually. They didn't think it was going to turn into such a tradition. mm -hmm. And I, you know, once like I talked to them about it, like I, it didn't hurt so bad. But when I first found out, I was, I was, I've, I've never felt that left out with my family before. And, um, and so, Anyway, moral of the story is that this stuff can <clears throat> this stuff can hurt, and so yeah. the way that OP handled this in just such a funny manner mannerism to like show 
what it felt like to just give an example like, well, you said this and so I'm doing that. Why is it a big deal? I think that's really cool. Well yeah. played. Well played. I like that. Okay. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> I hope no, I hope you can get involved in the next one. I think it would be good. We have a we have Same. a tradition like that at my family where my great grandma Ellen always would go around and be like, "What are you thankful for?" And that's been carried on. So every year we sit there and what are you thankful for? And Justin stole mine this year. Well, listen, so I'm not going to join the trend of people all being like, well, and I'm not making fun of it. I'm just saying mm. it's not my thing. He said mm. it in kind of a making fun of voice. He did, Danny. Yeah. He was kind <laughs> of, yeah. I'm going to save it then. I'm no, holding it in. No. Mm -hmm. Holding it in. Next let's story. Next. No, let's hear it. I'm pulling the jerry. Next. <laughs> Say it. I said I was thankful for air travel. Yeah, which I was going to say, you stole mine. But I was saying air travel because I wasn't just going to be like, well, family and us being together and everything here. Because, of course, that's why you're here. Like, But okay. sometimes you need to say it. But air travel. Why? Because it why, got you us might here. Ask? That's the easy answer. But really because it makes traveling anywhere easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay next <laughs> two plus two equals four i didn't want to say it <laughs> you know you could have gone without it just left it at the the subliminal message we'll leave it up to the editors <laughs> <laughs> me <laughs> okay so this next one comes from r slash true off my chest another best of redditor updates though yeah it's titled my girlfriend 27 female did the sweetest thing for my brother nine and now I know she's the one. My parents moved him to another school towards the end of the school year, and he had trouble making friends. He still invited his whole class to his birthday party. That was on Friday, but nobody came. None of the kids. It was really heartbreaking to see all of the empty tables when he was really looking forward to it. My girlfriend of four years decided to call her brothers, asking them to come over, and she took off to go pick up her nephews. They're a little older, but they were still really nice to my brother. She called up her friends with kids. It wasn't a ton of people, but it was way more than before. All thanks to her. My little brother was so happy, playing in the jumper with her nephews and brothers. They were all play wrestling with him. He had such a good time. It was nice that everyone came and was being so nice to him. But I'm also just super grateful to my girlfriend because she made it happen. I was watching her the whole time going, wow, I want to marry this woman. She's the one for me. Now I'm literally browsing online for engagement rings. Some comments people pulled. Your little brother was playing with his future family. I love this. Gave me all the feels. I wish you the best life ever. Make sure you have her back, my bro. Good women can greatly improve every aspect of your life. As someone who recently had his five-year-old not have anyone show up to his birthday party and saw him get crushed, yeah, she not just pulled off something amazing, but may have made a life-changing difference. Now, how are you going to learn what her ring size is, brother? OP's response, I'm sorry to hear about that. It's a really heartbreaking feeling, especially for a little kid. I hope you guys were able to do something to cheer him up. My dad and I were thinking of taking him somewhere, so we didn't focus on that. But luckily, my girlfriend came to the rescue. That is a good question. I don't know if I could just take one of the rings she already has. She's got a bunch of them and find a place I could maybe figure out the size. If anyone's got ideas on how to figure this out covertly, I'm open to hearing it. So the update. So this happened June 20th of 2022, this year. And this update came July so less than a month later, July 6th, less than a month later. Update. My girlfriend did the sweetest thing for my brother, and now I know she's the one. She said yes. <laughs> I proposed to her on Sunday after we decided to go on a camping trip. Y'all, she would not even let me finish my speech that I've <laughs> spent all week practicing for nothing, lol. I know some of you were telling me ways to figure out her ring size without her getting suspicious, but I just wasn't built for that level of stealth, so I brought in her sister to help me. My girlfriend, oh, sorry, my bad, fiance, <laughs> yep. was crying. I was crying. She said yes, and that's all that matters to me. She's made me the happiest guy. Seriously, I'm still beyond happy it all worked out. We haven't been able to stop smiling at each other anytime we're in the same room, and I love it, LOL. 
All that's left is the wedding and the rest of our lives together. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I, one of the things that really got me <clears throat> is the comment about that's a life-changing moment mm -hmm. because it really is. And that's why, I mean, that's why I, I think so highly of teachers because when you're working with these children and when you, you make a really positive impact, yeah. that can really stay with them forever. Yeah. And it's such a Literally beautiful forever. thing. Literally forever. Like actually forever. Yeah. People don't realize the effects you can have on yeah. kids. It's unbelievable. It's, it's unreal. Amazing. We had a, a kindergarten teacher on our Spotify live tonight and um, just hearing about like what it's like in a kindergarten classroom is just, it's yeah. so cute. And I, I worked in one for a little bit when I was in high school. We had like special credits we could take where oh, we went cool. and like worked in a kindergarten classroom. And these kids, like they're so cute. Like Nuggets. Well, and they're just so <laughs> impressionable. Like what, yeah. what they learn at that age is so, so important. And like, I just remember this one moment where we had a little girl who had Down syndrome in this classroom I worked in. And she was adorable, like the kindest little soul, just wanted to be included, wanted to have fun, wanted to make friends. And I remember I was leading the line from the kindergarten classroom to like the music room one day. And all the little girls like clamored to the front of the line to like be close to me. And um, this little girl, her I'll just say, call her T um, so I don't give her name away. But like T came up and like, wanted to like hold hands with these other little girls that were holding hands and one girl like swatted her hand away and I remember looking at her at them and I go that is absolutely not acceptable I go if you're not going to hold hands with everyone no one's going to hold hands everyone drop hands and we all walk to music and I just like good I just like I'm mm -hmm. like they're in, they're in kindergarten they already know how to bully but I like you just think and I'm like if I maybe helped yeah. Create not bullies right then. Um, it's just like they're so impressionable. Absolutely. It's crazy. That's amazing. I love that you did that. Let me just toot my own horn here. Good. No, you should. I mean, you should. Like those moments are important to talk about. They're so impressionable. Like, and I I remember the first time I got bullied on a elementary school playground. This kid threw a Hot Wheel at my head. Like asshole. Wow. And it's like if someone would have been there for me. Yeah. Or when I got bullied in high school, like if someone would have would have been there for me. I feel like I go into a kindergarten classroom and be like, aliens are real. We need to go to space. We need to find, we need to get to the next star. We need to go to the nearest planet. <laughs> Bro. Sign up for the astronaut academy. You've always wanted to be an astronaut, right? What yep. about, what's the new moon that we found? One of Jupiter's That's not moons? A new moon. It's just Titan, Saturn's moon. We just got a clearer view of it. Yeah, but it looks like Earth. Yeah. We got to go there. I want to see what it's like. Oh, I know. So some of these kindergartners will be on those missions. So let's get it going. Let's inspire them now while they're impressionable. They're going to go home and have nightmares. No, they are not. <laughs> they're going to be inspired and excited compared to all the boring stuff you learn in school. Mm, true. I, I think I told you guys this before, but I, when I was, this was a little bit older, but I was in seventh grade, still a kid. And, um, I, one, my mom just like never took, my, or dad, like my parents, stepmom, no one ever like took me to back, back to school shopping. Oh, or if they did, I don't know. I just never what? really went back to school shopping. So what'd you do? You were the kid on the first day. It was like, hey, you got a pencil. <laughs> hey, you got a piece of paper. No, 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 no. <laughs> I would get supplies. I meant, sorry, oh, I meant new clothes. clothes, clothes. Oh. Yeah. That's really common though. Yeah. It's really common, especially for people that just can't afford it. Well, and, and my mom would be, uh, it was like. There was attempts in some sorts. Like, I, I'm not, like, throwing anyone under the bus. Like, I remember one time, like, my dad and stepmom took me. Are you sure? Throw them under. And and it was super <laughs> overwhelming for me. And we, like, didn't get too far. And then I know, like, another time. Um, well, my mom used to always just say, like, no, we'll just go shopping, like, after. It's, like, there's sales right after, like, the. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, which was true. But then it was, like. We didn't always end up going. I don't know. It was yeah. just, everyone was all over the place, but it's, it was a, definitely a core memory for you. It was because I was wearing these sandals that were like the only shoes that were comfy for me. I also, that's another thing is I had a really hard time with shoes, but um, they're the only things that were comfy for me. And it started getting really cold and I'm still wearing these sandals. And I was so embarrassed because this guy next to me was just like, what are you doing wearing sandals? That's so weird. It's cold outside. And this other guy looks over and he, they're like both popular and I was not. And this other guy looks over and he was just like, what's the problem, dude? I'm wearing shorts. What's the big deal? And he goes, uh, th there's, there's no big deal. 
Yeah, and like, hell yeah. You guys, you don't even understand how much that meant to me. Like that was everything that stuck with me. It was, it's a core memory. I can't even explain it to you. And I still know who that guy is. And like, every time I run into him, I'm like, you said my sandals were okay. <laughs> Isn't it crazy though? How some little things, I have a bunch of those from school that I can remember. Yeah. Cause you had it rough. You like didn't have friends. Yeah, it you, depended like, on the year. No, it, but you went through a really hard time in yeah. school. It was mainly like starting middle school because yeah, everyone you I knew, schools. my whole, well, no, I didn't. Well, like you moved, right? Because like well, Wyzetta, where you went to school was so big, everyone kind of shifted. God, I forget that you went there. Yeah, yeah so, so we crazy. had like so many elementary schools and then there was three middle schools. So they all diverted, but most yeah. of the people from my elementary school went to the other middle school. Yeah. And I think me and maybe five to 10 others from my elementary school, everyone I knew went there. And then it was all the other kids from all the other elementary schools. And you know, by that point, all those little cliques are formed. Everyone the, has their friends so formed. And it's, it's like so everyone's hard. so mean. But I just, yeah. I mm. The other thing I was going to say is how crazy would it be if you would have certain experiences? Even to this day, I'm sure we're all still going to have experiences that will stick with us for like they're little moments in time. They're not even an mm -hmm. experience, right? Like a trip's an experience, but one little moment in time mm -hmm. where someone just looks at you and says something or something unexpected happens. Yeah. What if you knew like, as that moment was happening, it's like, this is something I'm going to retain forever. Mm -hmm. Those yeah. one little moments. Because it, at the time you're like, oh, it's just another like 20 seconds of another day, even though it's special, right? It yeah. sticks out. But for it to stick with you for that long is yeah. crazy. The brain is nuts. It like, is where so is cool. that shit stored? It's where amazing. is that? It's amazing. Well, and that's why I think I remind that guy, like, every time I run into him, which is probably oh, that's so cool. fucking annoying, but, like... <laughs> no, it's <laughs> cool. You still see him, time. though. Yeah, but it's just, like, I... I want him to know that that's so important and that that moment like you said that like tiny moment that he probably didn't even remember i think he told me he doesn't remember it it's like to him he was just it it didn't it wasn't like a lot of like skin off his back yeah. but to me it, it oh yeah it's made me who i am today <laughs> No. Just kidding, but like seriously, like it, it is. It's, it's so important. You. Yeah. I know, well, I mean, you don't know what that changed. Like, you don't know how how that affected your confidence just going forward. Butterfly effect. throughout the rest of school. Yeah. You don't know mm -hmm. that shit can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not wrong. Oh, I just love kindness. I um I came across this thing called the Angel Tree. It's like from the Salvation Army. You can post like your kids and their list and what they need for the holidays. And there's there's so many other organizations that that do this. And I learned about Angel Tree from a TikTok. And it's like, I wish there were just more ways to find out about all these programs to help. Because I went and looked and like today was the last day you could have shopped. And I was like, fuck, I would have gone and like, I would have gone so much shopping. Like I love shopping. It's, it is my Olympics. I'm so good at it. I would have crushed. I think you could start setting up your own too. Like what I you know. did with the teachers in I the know. classrooms. I know. I need to. That's the really most cool. powerful thing you can do. I mean. I know. There's just so many areas of like people I'd love to help. And so it's like. Yeah, it one just at needs, a time. I know. It just needs to be a general, general thing. We can all pull together. Like I just look at how many subscribers are on YouTube. There's like 468,000 of you guys right now. And it's like if every person donated $1, $1. We yeah. could do think some about crazy things. how many people we could help next yeah. year. Okay, let's get it in the books. 2023. That would be amazing. Year of helping. Well, and then I think we could, you know, up front, we could pick here are the causes we're passionate about. 50 episodes, 50 boom, causes. Boom, 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 boom. That'd be cool. That is pretty cool. 50 episodes, 50 causes. That oh, would be interesting. You guys are giving me chills just thinking about let's it. Let's do it. Cheers to that, you guys. Yeah. Dollar an episode. I, um... <laughs> Like, I'll wait <laughs> from each person. I just felt, I like really reached for it. Oh, All right, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, thank no. you. Well, I mean, if it was, if it was a dollar an episode each person, that's fifty bucks. That kind of gets expensive for everyone. But like a dollar a month, like twelve dollars a year, we could set it up as like something. Like uh, I'll I'll look into it. But goddamn, January's coming fast. I got to get to work. Let's do some shit though. Let's do it. There's so many people we could make a difference it's just it's so important to me so let's do it maybe let's one it. year in the future we could have like a million dollar donation and we just have one of those giant checks can you imagine that'd be incredible 
That'd be dope. That'd be fucking insane. <laughs> Think about how it. many people that would help. We're going to do it. Wow. We're doing it. Are you going to cry? Well, yeah, I'm picturing like, <laughs> I'm picturing that moment happen and then we replay this clip and it's like, literally, fuck. Yeah. We're going to make it happen. Uh, yeah, we are. Oh, okay. 2023, the year of, what do we call it? Can't just be like the year of change. Year of something. Post in the comments. Let me know what we should call it, but it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. I'm thinking. The gears are spinning. Yeah. Okay. This next one is from r slash ask Reddit. And it's titled, Any chance there's anyone out there who could help save my wedding? Also, this one was posted 11 years ago. What? Whoa. <laughs> yeah. How old is Reddit? 11. That's what my thought was. <laughs> Reddit's pretty old. Reddit's an OG. Wow. Yeah. So huh. posted 11 years ago by Big Poppy Sea Dog. Nice. So getting married in Tampa in three weeks. We had booked a big mansion for the wedding with the idea of having the ceremony and reception there. That way, anyone who wanted to stay over could crash on the floor or whatever. The property owner emailed me today talking about a, quote, lawsuit and code enforcement. Long story short, his email was only three lines. We lost the venue. I don't know what I'm going to do about him, but for now, I'm trying to find somewhere to have the ceremony. Problem is that June is a fairly popular time for weddings, so almost every venue is booked. Another issue is that since this was going to be at a private residence, we have already bought about $1,500 in liquor, and most wedding places won't let you bring and serve your own. So my fiancé is freaking out. Trying to calm her down has actually had an overwhelming calming effect on me, and we don't have anywhere for the ceremony slash reception anymore. We can't change the date without fucking over a bunch of friends and family who have already bought plane tickets, and there is the honeymoon too. Can't reschedule that with work. The caterers, wedding cake, DJ, and bartenders are all flexible as far as changing the venue, and so is the officiant, my brother. This is her, hopefully, only wedding, and I have an understandable desire to make everything perfect. I feel like I'm failing miserably at the moment. Does anyone know of a good venue that is somewhat unique and interesting that would be available June 11th and meets the requirements? Edit, we are both atheists, and while this may sound snobbish or elitist or whatever, we find the idea of getting married in a church rather unappealing. I know beggars can't be choosers, but I'm not at the end of my rope just quite yet. Edit 2, should have mentioned this in the original post, but we were expecting about 150 people. Edit 3, thanks so much everyone for all the kind words and support, and some amazing ideas. I am leaving my work now and driving to the hotel about an hour and then i'm going to go through all the suggestions and figure this out i am much more optimistic about this than i was two hours ago my best man called me to tell me he saw this on the front page i promised to post how it went to edit four last for tonight i said in the comment below but i wanted to say it again where everyone could see i was upset and cynical about this earlier because the guy venue owner was a bit of a dick it is impossible to feel that way now one guy acted in his own interest and over 800 Redditors have commented and made terrific suggestions or just wished me well. This is why I come here. Just as I start to lose faith in humanity, you people all remind me how good other human beings can be to each other without any sort of motive or incentive except comment karma. <laughs> Thanks so much to everyone for your suggestions and kind words. I again <laughs> promise to post pictures of the special day and update with something more than it went okay. Update. I'm the guy whose wedding venue canceled on him three weeks before the big day. Here's how it went. All bold, caps lock, awesome. I can't even say, quote, it went okay as a joke. It was epic. We took the have it in a field idea and really ran with it. After three solid weeks of work, cleaning and prepping, my wife's uncle's farm was ready for action. It nice. was a big property, and he has horses, cows, pigs, and goats. We cleared out a cow pasture for parking and set up a tent by the stables. The stables were filled with his best horses, Pasofinos, mm. for those who care. They're fucking fancy, y'all. And that's me, not him. I called them fancy. And one of the stalls had some weak and half-old puppies that were just born. 
We moved the wedding from six to seven and the weather was perfect. Not a cloud in the sky and the breeze started up about 30 minutes before the ceremony. Since we didn't have to drop any money on the venue, I got it all back from the rich doctor who canceled on us, we were able to have other stuff. Some of the highlights of the evening included amazing food and a shitload of liquor, which makes everything better, a roasted pig, two bounce houses. Holy shit, was that the best idea ever? (laughs) I'm doing that. Carrot wedding cake. A big ass fire complete with s'mores. S'mores? Why did I say it like that? Oh my God. S'mores. Mini petting zoo with goats. Two big air conditioners for the tent. More shit I am sure I'm forgetting. Even without all the stuff, it would have been the best night of my life. Committing to someone I love so much. But it was great to be able to come through and pull off something so wonderful. So as promised, here are some pictures. That thing I'm drunkenly eating with a friend is one of them is pig eyes, not gory, just tasted pretty shitty. The girl behind me has a hilarious reaction of how it went. Thanks again for all the help and support, Reddit. You guys are the best. And the pictures? Big poppy sea dog. There's the Mm. venue. It's set up a bunch of chairs and a little arch over what looks like a pasture gate. Yep. The tent with all their tables. Nice. Very nice. The bride and groom. So cute. Who's the little? Who's the little homie? I don't know who the little homie is, but after looking at this picture, this groom kind of looks like my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Doesn't he? Yeah. Step on a Lego. Wait, yeah. the guy that you got caught in bed with. Yeah. My dad did walk in on us yeah. when we were visiting California once. Oh, I didn't know that was the one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but very nice wedding. He's in sandals on his wedding day, Lauren. You never have to feel bad about sandals again. Oh, that's amazing. I'm wearing sandals on my wedding day. He showed the dogs. Oh my God. Look at their big group. I want a group shot like that. That's a really cool. That is dope. We'll, we'll break out the drone. We could break out the drone. <laughs> little, little, nice. Little boob grab action. Oh, yep. That's me. Amazing wow, photos. I'll be sure to post the link for their photos in the description. I like Very the cute. photos aren't like, they're just like so chill. Yeah. See? Well, this is also from a wedding 11 years ago before the pressure of Instagram made everyone take crazy pics. Back when life was <laughs> nice. Look at the bounce houses. Oh. Look at them. The bride and groom in the bounce house. What an amazing, honestly, I amazing think that, day. I think that's a big reason why I don't leave feeling drained is because of what this person is saying right now. It's like the people on here and the people offering their advice and their comments. Yeah. It's such a comforting feel. Like there's so much constructive advice that's been given that it's just, it gives you faith in humanity. Yeah, like except for the ones where everyone's like, yeah, you're the asshole. And they're like, screw you. I'm deleting my account. You're all wrong. <laughs> it's like, it's, there's a lot of them that are well, yeah, not resolved. Yeah. Well, yeah, this episode is very different. This episode's great. I know it's not perfect, but I'm just saying that like, even... There are so amazing yeah. sense of community yeah. yes, that comes together agree, to help everyone. But some of the problems are just like. Well, those people are just assholes and they deserve to get handed a new one. But some are just like, aren't even some like where it's just, just there aren't any assholes and it's just a terribly tragic situation. Just like, ah. But at least they're then supported by a great community. Like typically in the comments, you yeah. do see people really come together and mm-hmm. pump everyone up. No. Yeah. Okay. Moving along. So this one was posted in True Off My Chest, and it's titled, My brother writes notes to me and my little sister, pretending to be our mom, and he doesn't know we know. My dad isn't in the picture, and my mom works long hours every day, so she's usually gone by 7 and comes back around 8. She's still a great mom, though, and I love her very much. One day, I, 15 female, found a note in my bag the day of a major exam from my, quote, mom, telling me not to give up and that she's proud of me no matter what. It really made me happy, but the handwriting was a bit wonky. I didn't think much of it. A while later, I catch my brother, 20 male, packing something into my bag at night. I play it off and pretend, I play it off and pretend I don't think much about it. The next day, I find another note in my bag. Then I realized my little sister, seven female, had been getting notes to from mom every day, 
because I was helping her pack her bag in the morning one time. She told me that, quote, I know it's from brother, but I still like them. Oh. <laughs> My brother always puts on this bad boy front for everyone. Like, quote, I don't care about anything and I wear leather jackets. So it's super <laughs> sweet and kind of funny to think about him writing in wonky cursive and drawing heart shapes at night. What do the leather jackets have to do with it? (laughs) Just that bad boy persona. He has no idea we know, and I don't plan on telling him. I don't really use Reddit, but I just think it's really sweet, and I got another note this morning. Adorable. There is an update. Update is just titled, My brother writes notes to me, my little sister, pretending to be our mom, and he doesn't know we know. I don't know if I'm doing this right, so sorry if I get the formatting wrong or anything. The original post on my profile. I'd like to thank all of you who left kind words for my brother and for all the awards and upvotes. So this isn't the most exciting of updates, but this post kind of got kind of viral and my brother actually saw it on TikTok. Yeah, it was an awkward conversation to have, but he said you guys are all really wholesome and he thanks you for your compliments. As for his reaction, I don't know if he's going to see this, but he shrugged it off like it was no big deal. But I can tell he was secretly really pleased. (laughs) By the way, to some of you who asked if my mom knew, I actually didn't ask her, but she told me when it came up the other day that my sister already showed her his notes. She thinks it's really cute, too. He doesn't do the mom thing anymore, but I think he figured we still liked getting notes from him, so he still leaves them. Just not signed off by mom. (laughs) He writes in his normal handwriting, and the notes aren't as cheesy, but they're still really sweet. Sorry if you were expecting a wedding post or something. A wedding post? I don't know what they mean, but that's adorable. Like, that is adorable. An older brother just, like, taking care of his little siblings, making sure they have sweet notes to send them on their day and like kind of like like looking out for mom too. Like mom is busy working. Mom has it so hard. Single mom to three kids. What a selfless little cutie. Yeah. Ugh. I love that. I know. I do too. One of the top comments on the original, man, if he ever gets married, you have got to give a speech and tell this story, which is probably uh, what the wedding yeah. thing was about. And they go, yep, he already has a girlfriend who is amazing, by the way. And I'm pretty sure they're going to tie the knot because I've dated for so long. This is definitely going to be on my list of things to say in my speech if yep. I make one. Um, and just top comments on the update. He sounds ridiculously adorable. So cute. I really want to give a wedding speech. You do? I've always wanted to, yeah. I think you'll give one for both of your friends. That get Maybe married. I'll have to do it on my own. I don't think you can do that. Can you? I think you give like a There's thank no you. rules. I think you give like a thank you speech I at just, your wedding. I don't want any like wedding rules. I'm not. Where are you speak? Are you going to do a wedding speech for yourself? Yeah. <laughs> this my guy, best, Justin. My best man, Justin. <laughs> this guy, Justin, you know. <laughs> wow. I just, I don't even have any words. He knows all about space. Coolest thing ever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm. No, I actually don't want to do a, a speech at someone's wedding. Well, I that's unfortunate. I invite you <laughs> to give a speech at the wedding, for sure. Lauren. <laughs> what? I invite you to give a speech at the wedding formally. You're in front really of, good. You have in great front of the timing. thousands. You actually have really good comedic timing. Like you, I think, could take stand-up comedy classes and like be the next stand-up comedian of the millennial gal generation. Wow, you are talking. A big game over here. No, <laughs> but you just have really great timing and you're these like snappy little quick one-liners. You're pretty good. You do really well working with a crowd. Hmm. I could see it. I, I was thinking more like one-on-one, you know? I don't know about crowds. Pub- like a small intimate room. Public speaking was a lot for me. Well, you do a really good job at our live shows. Uh your your little uh. well, you can have alcohol as a comedian. You can have a drink if you want. Fair enough. Your uh, Lauren at the end of our last in person live show at the Bourbon Room, we were all like kind of getting cheesy at the end, saying thank you. And Lauren, I don't remember exactly what you said, but you're like, and I wouldn't be up here without alcohol. <laughs> and everyone just lost it. It was so funny. Yeah, it was good. It was true. It was really good. It was true. Uh, it was true. <laughs> <laughs> It was true. Okay, we ready to move along? 
We are. Last but not least. No, we still got a couple more. Oh, how many? A couple. We're only an hour and nine minutes in. Oh, wow. No way. I feel like I've been sitting here all night. Same. It's just because they're like so happy and we don't talk about them as much. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you need to go to bed. I'm getting there. We have some Survivor to watch. The funny mm. thing is, though, I like by the time the episode's about to end, I'm like, oh my God, I need to go to sleep. I need to go to sleep. Really? And then, and then as soon away. as I stand up off this couch, I'm like, energized. Maybe I need like an intermission. Maybe. Not right now. Do you want to try some jumping jacks? Nah. Okay. Next time. Hmm. Okay. So this next one. It is from r slash relationship advice and is titled in love with my friend's wife. Before any judgment, please let me explain. I, 28 male, grew up with three good friends. We've been friends since we were like eight years old. Let's call them John, Steve, Sean. Steve had a sister who I'll call Mary. When we were all kids around 12, Mary was 10. Her and John started dating. Yes, you think two kids dating. Well, that went for a very long time. Mary and John grew up dating and got married when they were 20 and 22. Unfortunately, John passed away from cancer three years ago. This was horrible for everyone, and especially Mary, of course. We were all friends, as I am close to her too. I lost one of my best friends since I was a kid in such a horrible way. Mary and John lived in a different state than me, and pretty much everyone just lives in different places. Four years ago, I found a job in the same state as them. It's like 40 minutes away from their house, so I would visit often and was there during John's worst moments. Now, for the past year, I think Mary and I grew closer. I really wouldn't know how to explain it since we have all been close, but it just feels different. She has not dated anyone since John died. She even confessed around eight months ago she hasn't even kissed or slept with anyone else, that she just didn't feel attracted to anyone. She has been on a couple of dates, but it's just weird according to her. Now, I have been feeling quite attracted to her for the last month. I just feel so happy around her and just really never felt like this about any other girl. Before anyone says anything, I didn't have any feelings like this before. She is pretty and always thought that, but never saw her in any other way while John was alive. Which is why I feel so incredibly bad about this. I feel like I am betraying my friend. I haven't been able to talk to anyone because I don't even know how I could explain it. I like to tell sometimes that John would actually be happy. It's me and not some random dude who'd, who would hurt her. But I can't really know that. And I'm just trying to justify myself. About a month ago, I think there was a moment when I felt like maybe she kind of feels the same way. We went out to a friend's birthday. There was quite some people and she had a few drinks. She took an Uber and so did I since I knew I would also get some drinks. She asked me to share the Uber, and on the way there, she was talking about a guy that has been flirting with her. And she said, quote, I'm just going to read as is, and maybe you guys can help me figure it out. And she said, quote, why can't it with them how it is with you? Why can't I feel it with them? Mm. She went home, and I went to my house. We never talked about it because I don't even know what that meant. Maybe she meant it as it's easier to talk to me and open up to me because we've known each other so long. Or maybe she meant it as she likes me, but feels guilty that it's me and would rather to feel like that about someone else. I guess the reason I'm here is to just see if maybe I'm thinking about things too much because of how I feel, or there could actually be something there. Maybe she feels the same way. Maybe I should let it go and not ruin the only connection she has with someone close to him. I mean, there's his family and her brother, who were also literally John's best friends, but they live far away from her. I don't know about telling her I'm terrified of not being how I think it could. So strangers have read it. A little help would be helpful. Can you imagine reading that initial post? Just like, what would you say? Like a friend texts you this almost. Yeah. Like you are the Reddit. Well, I actually have people that are, I don't know if I'd call them close to me. Yeah, close to me. Um, where this situation has happened and Ooh. the, oh my God, <clears throat> the best friend actually did get together with the husband. Wow. Mm -hmm. And they're married. They're incredibly happy. 
It was not planned. There was never any thoughts of it like during the yeah. marriage. I think it was partially that closeness that you that they built through mourning together. Grief. Yeah. yeah. And that like they could only really understand the grief. And I think that over years it eventually turned into something more and it is it I know that it was kind of a hard place for the children yeah oh yeah that would be really tough but I mean it it ended up working out and everyone's really happy so well you share the loss and then you also when people are that close of friends to where they are best friends there's got to be similar qualities there's got to be a similar personality to some extent because I mean, they're obviously not the same person, but to be best friends and get along that well with one another, yeah, they have to have a good amount in common. Birds of a feather flock together exactly. vibes. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not surprising because, because of that. And at I the same just had the most intrusive thought. <laughs> Can you imagine you guys dating if I died? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> All the people that commented on the YouTube a while ago, Lauren and Justin just have so much chemistry. They'd be like, I told you. Well, that would never happen. And that's not true. But and it's like, those are trolls. <laughs> so it's like close friends, people who all get along oh, and I have just hit my tooth. Sorry. And have so much in common are going to have chemistry. You have chemistry yeah. with friends. You have chemistry with people you work with, if you can work well together. Yeah. I mean, there's like obviously levels to chemistry, but it would be weird like if us three all didn't get along in some way. I know. So it's like- We're little, um, the three amigos. There's just <laughs> levels to it. But I, this story is not surprising in the fact that I feel like you share so much. You already know each other. It's not, you don't, you almost- don't go back into that dating phase of like, oh, I have to go meet all these random new people and have a bunch of shitty dates and things. And the feelings happened on both sides. So it's, yeah. you know. I just, I I was watching a, a series once, Manifest. And- Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, this was, yeah. Yeah, and I, I hated it, you guys. I hated it so much. I was telling, like, the person I was dating at the time, I was just like, nope, if I die, nope. I was yeah. like, don't even, look. nope, you can't even communicate with any of my friends, I swear to it God. It was basically this, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and you don't know any different because you, it just was like a regular flight to you. Yeah. The time. That movie, that show is crazy. I got through like the first crazy. five episodes and it was kind of cool. And then I was like, okay, it's just getting too much. Oh, I, I love it. I can't wait to start it again because the new <laughs> season came out. Oh, but I'm, you guys, I'm having the worst time sleeping at home alone. Like, I oh, went, oh, it's so bad. I just like, I can't like watch scary stuff. You recommended Wednesday. Did and you I try was like, it? no, because it already said like murder mystery. And then she like had a piranha eat some balls off. And I was like, this is too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not bad. It's just like, it's also, it's so far fetched scary. It's like, no. it's creatures. Yeah. So you already know how fake it is. You know what? I, I'm, you guys, I'm not fucking kidding. This is so fucked up that I'm admitting this. But from our episode, I still sleep with my closet open. That wasn't a joke. I know. I get so scared oh at God. night. It's ridiculous. You need to like cleanse your house and like bring <laughs> bring in some better vibes. I think or you just need to watch some happy shit before you go to that's sleep. That's my point. I just yeah. watch Survivor. I'm okay. so obsessed with Survivor. I don't know how I've missed 40 seasons of it. I it's don't know so how you good. Have either. It's mm. so good. Also, I think um I think I want to apply to be on the amazing race. Yeah. But the You've only talked about that before. The only problem is if I take Justin as my partner, mm -hmm. Justin and me both can't eat shit. There's eating challenges. Oh, so I can. I know. So you need me as a partner. I think so. But yeah. then he's going to be sad. Mm -hmm. When are they going to do trio groups? Like, can, Is there a game show that has three people? We can make Lauren eat the weird shit. <laughs> Justin can talk about space. We can do a triathlon. We're not just going to talk about space, <laughs> dude. I'm a better at competitions than that. <laughs> It's well, like we're in a competition <laughs> racing. I'm like, hey, other team, guess what? There's this thing called blah, blah, blah. And I like distract them. <laughs> the Fermi them. paradox. Yeah, basically. No, we, we do something really good. 
I can operate a stick shift. We could go on Family Feud. We should do Family Feud. Oh my God. I don't, I'm not really good at that though. I'm not fast enough for Family Feud. You all can talk about it. I'd be yeah, like, Morgan, see this. Mm, okay. I'm the, the worst at those type of uh, question games. I know. I think we got to do an activity game. I can't believe how sexual Family Feud is actually. Really sexual. Like mm. all the all the the questions and answers lean that way. I know. Maybe Isn't it crazy? Then. They're all super <laughs> horny on that show. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So some comments on the original post. At first, I was thinking this was going to be one of those posts where you were interested in your friend's wife, not knowing any boundaries, but it turned out to be fairly wholesome, but a bit sad. My condolences, blah, my condolences for you and his wife's loss. However, why don't you just ask her if she'd go on a date with you? Just tell her you've been enjoying your times together and that you'd like to see how things will work out if she happens to be interested too. I wouldn't recommend telling her you're in love though. At that point, it might feel too much or yeah. even weird since you're just friends after all. LP's response the problem is, I don't know how to do that, lol. I'm scared of everything, just being in my head and then ruining things with her forever. I'm sure it would be a weird moment and we could move on from it. We've been friends for so long. I know it wouldn't be the end of the friendship, but it would be really weird afterwards. Someone asked, or it was the same commenter and they follow up and they go, that's why you shouldn't come on too hard. Suddenly professing your love and affection generally doesn't bring much good in these dynamics. However, there's nothing wrong with asking a friend out for a drink or dinner. Build things from there and go out with True. her a couple of times and you can naturally see how the river flows. Yeah. And OP goes, we've gone out a couple of times, just the two of us, to movies, eat, sort of like dates, but as friends only. So if I ask her like that, I'll have to be specific that it is a date or she won't really know. Um, someone goes, talk to her brother. She may like you as well. OP, that is actually good advice and I never thought about it. I'm sure she would probably talk to him about something like this. I might actually do this. Thank you. Update. Or just take her to a movie when she thinks it's just friends and then put your arm around her and then everything becomes clear. Yeah, that does work out. Uh, or she gets really stiff. I feel like I would say something. Yeah. J Justin was talking about what he did to me. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, <laughs> I literally had no idea. I thought he just wanted so a sweet. friend. I thought he was going to be just like another guy friend or whatever. You and guys met on a dating app. <laughs> but I like didn't really respond to him after we matched. And so he like pulled this whole like, I'm new to LA. I'm just trying to make friends. I oh. saw you're from Minnesota. Okay. I'm from Minnesota. Okay. So he played it okay. off as like a, hey, I didn't realize that. Just trying to make friends. I'm new to LA. And yeah. so I was like, oh, new friends. Yeah. So I remember our first date, which was just like us meeting up for drinks. I told Whitney, I was like, yeah, I met up with this guy earlier before you came and met me out. Cause I went out again after. Mm hmm. Um, our drinks and she goes was it a date and I go oh, I don't think so I think he's just new to LA and wants to make friends oh four years later yeah because yeah. you Amazing. what because of you oh. basically <laughs> god this girl yeah. was this girl was not ready I just didn't know what the fuck it was and no I wasn't ready even I, once I even once you did know what it was you still said no <laughs> so yeah you did I wasn't ready. But it worked out perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. We here. And now I'm in trouble for not being ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's there's hilarious. that. There's that. Everyone's going to be like, see, I told you Morgan's been dropping ring hints. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think four years after four years, you're like, okay. I, especially at our age. I mean, we're 28. I'm about to be 29. It's kind of shit or get off the pot. <laughs> That's what my brother, that's what my brother's wife, my sister-in-law, Amy, always used to say to Matt and my mom. My mom was always, Matthew, shit or get off the <laughs> pot. Don't keep wasting Amy's time. That's hilarious. Honestly, yeah. guys do sit on the toilet for so long. What are you doing on there? Not, not anymore. The, not the birthday bounce house guy. I don't sit anymore. He proposed <laughs> less than a month later. I'm I in and out that. now these, these really? days. Really? Just oh, yeah. squat and leave? That's nice. Seriously. Mm. It's Yeah, you're down from 30 minutes to like five. You were at 30? Not even sometimes. 30. He would disappear in the morning for Most quite some time. Most days are like two maybe. You're, yeah, you're good. I'm yeah. just explosive. I go in and I'm in and out. I think the most I've witnessed is like 15 to 20 tops 
with somebody. He thirty. Would, yeah. Wow. Mm, I don't know about thirty. <laughs> it was twenty nine. It mm. was a while. He would like we when we would go to like a Pilates <laughs> class or something. He'd be like, "I got to get up like an hour earlier before we go and make sure I'm good." Because he was so nervous about his stomach. Aww. You can't hate on someone's health issues. No, no one's hating. Rude. No one Terribly is hating. Rude. No one is hating. I go through this. I almost shit my pants today. Yeah, but even when you go through, you're not cool unless you shit your pants. I literally had to use. So for our new house, we got we have like an unpermitted bathroom in the garage, and it is like it's not a a regular bathroom like you guys it <laughs> I've is never seen a toilet like it is that. the size of this chair like the, the pink ba- one the bathroom no not the, oh. not even the pink one that's okay. that's a godsend compared to this thing <laughs> and i'm in the garage like my dad just had something delivered to this house because he's using our garage as a storage unit now and i'm going through this pile of stuff and i'm like oh this is interesting all of a sudden i'm like oh my god oh my god i can't make it to the house and so there's this bathroom in the garage so I wreck that bathroom, <laughs> flush the toilet, wreck. There's no water. The water's shut off. <laughs> so I have to like, I have to go find the valve where the water is on the side of the house and turn the valve on. I'm now just realizing I forgot to shut it off. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go back to the house sometime before I fly to Minnesota. But I couldn't, I couldn't even stay in the garage. You christened after. the house. I couldn't even stay in the garage after. I had to leave because it was it smelled so bad. Is that wow. where the delivery was going? It was already dropped off, thank God. Oh. Yeah. Did you know about this story? No. I first I knew time the, I've told first it. First time? No, I to knew anyone. the I knew so the prequel. So I knew the special. Like I knew the prequel. Cuz I literally mm-hmm. said as we were leaving to go from our house to his house, mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, I kind of have to use the bathroom, but I think I'll be okay until I get home." But then my dad called me and he's like, yeah, I have some chairs getting dropped off at your house. Can you go? And I'm like, no. I'm What? Whose chairs are those? His. He Where's just, that going to go? I don't know. <laughs> no. I I'm staying you. there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So then I go back and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God. Like it was, it was. You're going to end up renting a storage unit. <sighs> so there was no yeah. water, like zero water. Like it was just on just the, the baby, ceramic. the baby bit that was in mm. the toll, <laughs> the, the bowl. And that room is small. I'm, when I say the room is small, it is literally the size of this chair. Like you sit on the toilet and I couldn't even, <laughs> as I was sitting on the toilet, you can't shut the door. Mm-hmm. I you couldn't could, shut the door. I could, had to shit with the door open to the garage. Wow. You could wash your <laughs> face while you're on the toilet. It was terrible. With the sink, in the sink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. Uh, okay. Let's get to this lovely man's okay. update. Enough of my poop trauma today. It's not an episode without me talking about poop, right? I'm down. I'm here for it. Update. In love with my friend's wife. After I posted here, I tried to reach out to her to talk to her and let her know. But she was in quarantine due to being exposed to someone with COVID. So we couldn't see each other for a bit over a week. When she was fine, I said I wanted to take her out to celebrate. That she was okay. And she agreed. We went to a really nice restaurant and had dinner there. Since it was still early, we went to watch a movie, and while we were there, we kissed. She panicked and went outside, told me she would talk to me later, and left. She ignored me for a couple of days. She would read my messages and not say anything or answer my messages. I was extremely anxious, but after the first day, I didn't want to overwhelm her. So the second day, I just texted her saying I was sorry, and I would let her have time to think. On the fourth day, she messaged me saying she wanted to talk to me if I wanted to and if I could go to her house. When I arrived at her house, we sat there and she apologized for the way she reacted. She just felt overwhelmed and panicked when she realized we were kissing. She said that she had been feeling a certain way about me and was scared of everything. I told her I had also been feeling a certain way about her and I would never try to do something that would make her feel uncomfortable and I was so sorry I kissed her. She said she was not mad about me kissing her and that she panicked because she actually liked kissing me until reality hit her. I asked her what did she feel and how did she want us to go about our feelings. And she said she didn't know. So I said if she would like for us to just take things slow, like really slow, and just figure it out together. And if not, I would understand. She said she would really like that and that she really likes me. So we did. It has been a month, kind of, and we are still together. We are taking things calmly and keeping it a secret for now. We do not want people to judge, especially since we don't know where this will all go yet. Until then, it will be between us. 
We've been seeing each other more often now, almost every day, and I've never been happier. I really hope this goes where I want it to go. Thank you, everyone, for your advice. And in the end, things kind of sort themselves out. I like That's it. the last update? Yeah. Okay. On the best of Redditor updates, I'm just going to go check the account real, yeah. real fast. Account's been suspended. Oh. But, uh... Drama. No, they just do that on throwaway accounts. Sometimes. Sometimes they really do suspend. But... No, nothing else. That's the that was the final update. Dang, as far as I can find. Hmm. We'll never know. Well, I mean, we kind of already said our our thoughts on it. I know it's hard. I think it is hard. It's one of those things where it's like it's it's kind of uncomfortable because you're like, well, if you have this chemistry now, was it always there? But I think it's if that person is gone and they're never coming back. Like this. There's nothing you can do and you both you both have the least in common, like the least thing you could have is that you both love that person. And so going through the grief process together, I think can really bring people together. So mm -hmm. I'm happy for them. Yeah, I am too. I like it. I like yeah. it. One last one. And it's got to be a good one. Like the pressure just feels like it's on. <laughs> okay, I found one. Today I fucked up by going in my wife's purse without asking. Today I fucked up. Well, late last night. I heard my wife's phone ringing in her purse. She was already in bed, so I reached in there and got it out to hand it to her. When I went to retrieve the phone, I also saw some candy in there. So I got the pack of candy out also and ate the small pack of about 11 pieces of Sour Patch Kids. I woke up about 3 a.m. in the morning having to use the bathroom. When I went to go to stand up, I felt really woozy. I thought this was because I was recently diagnosed with MS and I thought it was a side effect of my MS. I stumbled onto the bathroom and I had to sit on the toilet just to pee. I get back to bed and I could not hold a coherent thought in my head. I'm thinking, oh my God, if MS is causing this confusion, there's no way I can live like this. Mm. My mind is steady racing. I wake up my wife and tell her how I feel. I tell her if I don't wake up or if I go crazy, tell my kids I love them. She asked me if I want to go to the ER. I said no because my dad suffers from panic attacks and anxiety. He goes to the ER twice a week because of it. I was thinking maybe I might just be having a panic attack. I was like, my wife has good insurance on me, so if I die, they'll be taken care of. I finally fall back asleep. My wife wakes up to go to work the next morning. She asked, does she need to call in work and take me to the doctor? I told her no. She then walks to my side of the bed and sees the empty candy wrapper. Then she asked me, quote, did you eat my candy? I get a good look at the candy wrapper she's holding up since all the lights are on. I see her holding the empty wrapper of what I thought was Sour Patch Kid gummies. They were actually edibles called Stony Patch Kids. Then she starts laughing and says, that's what you get for going in my purse without asking me. <laughs> I knew it the second you started. Oh yeah, for sure. 100%. <laughs> of course. I've told my story. I don't know if you have told your weird like jerky story. Jerky? No, no, no. Dentist. Yeah, no. yeah. I, remember. I knew getting that's high, what you were getting at. Getting yeah. high at the dentist? No, he got so high the night before that yeah. he woke up high still. Yeah. yeah. I had no idea. I don't know. I if thought it was candy. I Literally the same thing. Wait, I know. really? Yeah. Huh. No, that's a lie. No, it's not. You knew they were gummies. Yeah, I thought you that was You just didn't, purpose. you thought they were old and so they weren't working. So you Jake, took like 10 of them. Jake told me potency goes down. So you knew they were gummies. <laughs> Yes, he just they were, I, didn't think they were potent. I believe. Yeah, he thought they were like just candy at I that point. I believed that all the effects had gone away because, you know, Jake's an expert in the field. That's like my friend with coffee. She thinks that it sits out for two hours and there's no more caffeine. <laughs> 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 Who thinks that? Kennedy. Oh my God, that's not how that works. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm just like so unsatisfied with that one what? though. What? Yeah. There is another good one that I, I Wait, question. probably With should have read. The dentist story, though. Yeah. Because I wasn't there for that. This was something that you guys told me. But 
what was the scenario? Were you guys together? And then uh, didn't you have to drive him to the dentist because of it? No, um, I went with Austin. Oh, oh. Austin drove. Okay. Yeah, okay. They, they like, Justin and his friend like to sandwich their errands at the same time. So they go do stuff together. That's cute. Yeah. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because then we get back for the session at the same time. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. Cute. Gets cuter every time. Okay, this one is, <laughs> I just have two really short, cute ones. Oh. But I, just really Jeez. short. Cute. They're just really, really short and cute. Um, so this one is from Chew Off My Chest. My friend ordered me McDonald's and I've never been so touched. That sounds so good. I went, I went to a friend's house earlier today to watch some football. We'll call him Brad. My friends do this sort of thing all the time. It's really casual and we just chill out all day. Normally we order food, but today Brad made pulled pork sliders for everyone. I was diagnosed with a digestive disorder this year and have a really limited food list that's safe for me to eat. And I can't eat pork. I ate before I arrived, so this wasn't a big deal. I was just planning on skipping then. About a half hour after we got there, someone knocks on the door, delivering McDonald's. Brad answers and brings the bag straight to me and goes, I'm sorry I didn't know you were coming and I want you to be able to eat. This is safe, right? McDonald's cheeseburgers are one of my safe foods, and I've mentioned it before. It seems like such a silly thing, but it's seriously touched me. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, I feel like people don't take my digestive disorder seriously, and it was just really nice to have someone go the extra mile for you. I've never been happier to eat a cheeseburger. Aww. That's what how that one story the other week should have ended. What one? The person who had... Oh... Never mind. It's a father's nose. Was it a father knows story? No. Oh. What was it? It's just his own personal story. <laughs> no. <laughs> Where the person had specific eating things, but did uh -oh. not bring anything for themselves. This oh, person. Oh, the ate. holiday party. Yeah. This person. That was the kid, wasn't it? The kid had. No, the, oh, the holiday. The that, yeah. The that, holiday party no, and the holiday the, party. No, that was the Friendsgiving. That yeah. was from the live show. That's yeah. the other one too, no. Yeah. You're talking about the. Yeah. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, that's on... Where they didn't provide for the... Yeah. Yeah. That's on uh, our Patreon. Okay. Because... <laughs> it's all stuff that the majority of people know, won't understand. But, but, but both... All the live shows are going to end up on Patreon. So if you're not a Patreon member, like January is a really good month to start. Little plug there. Sorry. Like no. Plug. Okay. Last, 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 last one. Again, from True Off My Chest... I drove 1.5 hours to take a nap in my mom's bed. Within the last 30 days, I was dumped by my girlfriend, my hamster passed away, and I finally put my two weeks in at my toxic job. I, an independent 28-year-old, was in need of something very specific that would fill the holes in my heart. I soon found myself driving 1.5 hours to my mom's apartment, where she greeted me warmly. I did my best to hang out with her for a bit, but ultimately found my way to her bed and cuddled up on it. I was passed out for five hours. When I finally crawled out of bed, she had dinner ready and gave me the biggest hug. I'm very lucky to have her love. There's nothing really greater. Aww. It meshed. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> no. Unhealthy Justin. boundaries. It meshed. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. I didn't even pick this one. Someone posted it on the Two Hot Takes subreddit and goes, maybe wholesome episode ending. I love that no matter how old you are, your mom is a safe space. Absolutely. Safe place. Justin, that's not enmeshment. The mom didn't get into bed with them. That would be weird. This was not weird. <laughs> That's all I got for this episode, y'all. Episode 95, okay. I think it'll be. I think 95. What are we going to do I think to it's celebrate 96. 100? Is it 96? Are you sure? Now I got to look. Episode 100 is going to be really interesting. I've decided. Oh. So episode 100 is going to be something never done before. I'm not going to read one single story. Who is? All of you. No, you can't. <laughs> so all of you need to come prepared with the best, best story you can find. What if we each find the same one? Come with a backup. What if our backups are the same? Better get on Reddit right then and there. What if we read like a textbook? 
You better practice. <laughs> add, add a little. Like a textbook. Add a little inflection in your voice. I'm if, not worried about reading. I do it mm, all the time. Mm. Yeah, you should be okay. Yeah. You got it, Lauren. You'll be good. I'm a textbook reader. No, you're not. You're what? fine. <laughs> What's an example? Today, my husband said that he loves me, and I said I fart. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like the computer voice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before they made it, like, actually have inflection. Honestly, we could all use a little more inflection in our voices. It's It comes with practice, too. Okay, I'll practice the story a hundred times. Well, it's okay. rehearsing in front of the mirror. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I could see it. And then I'll get up here, and I'll choke. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll throw up, and then I'll slip on it. <laughs> Not on my rug. I love this rug. I know. I just had to do like the callback from yeah, the beginning of the episode. Mm, I, see what, I yeah. see what you did there. Mm -hmm. um, happy Christmaca, everyone. I've got my <laughs> little so Christmaca cute. sweatshirt on. You didn't tell me that we were doing holiday. It was a last minute decision. You wore your holiday pants. And socks. Yeah. You're, they, the, oh, you're sad. The bird what are you is holding about? a Willis? candy cane. Yeah. You're the little sock girl. You and my dad. <laughs> God, I love it. Where'd my button go? Oh, there it is. Justin's got his flashing reindeer sweatshirt. I was, I noticed like in like the middle of the episode and I was like, wait a minute, do those turn on? And <laughs> if they do, then things? why are they not on? Conserving battery. Yeah. We don't know how to replace this battery. Oh, this fair weird. enough. There's no battery to replace anywhere? No. Like how do you replace? I think it's a little button. We got to figure out how to dissect it. It We'll figure it out. It's in there. Um, we'll sort it. But any final notes for our friends to end 2022? Oh, that was a lot of pressure. No, just say goodbye to the family. Bye. Anything else? <laughs> Any notes? Have a safe and happy holiday celebration. Do not drink and drive. Call car services like Uber, Lyft, or your friends, or your mom and dad, or your grandma and grandpa. They're probably not hammered. Just be safe. Life is too short to not be safe. Also, I have one. Don't take things too seriously. There's going to be some type of issue, small, large, this holiday season. And just try to take it with a grain of salt. Expect it. Mm -hmm. Handle it with grace and live your life happily. And don't worry. The holidays will be over before you know it. And <laughs> yeah. January is coming very quickly. Yeah. See you all in 2023. Woo! It's so happy weird. Holidays. Ah, happy <laughs> holidays, y'all. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time. Bye.